Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's let, let's go. Uh, um, whew, are we ready? This series has been extremely powerful. Yeah, this series has been extremely powerful. I particularly love this series because it would answer a lot of the questions that we have. Yeah, when we teach about the believer's authority, the reason why is that, you know, oh wow, just a lot of questions. Some people always say that, why does bad thing happen? Is it that God is not kind? Sometimes someone that you really love, that is a good person, dies. And you say, why did God allow him to die? This series is going to answer that question. Sometimes you understand how come a born-again Christian can have demonic problems. And despite all their prayer, it's not been solved. Glory to God. The first thing I want to talk about today is from Exodus chapter 17. And I want to just show you a particular concept. And the concept is the fact that life is spiritual. Life is what? Spiritual. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 9. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 9. You need to jump quickly because I have a lot of scriptures to read. Exodus chapter 17 verse 9. The Bible says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go and fight the Amalekites, and go and fight Amalek tomorrow. And I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hands. Now I want to see a very powerful concept here. All of you that do businesses, listen to this. All of you that pray for something, listen to this. Moses said, we're believing for a breakthrough. But there's something we must do. We must do two things. Number one, Joshua, go out and pick men and fight. That is what you must do in the natural. He says, but as you pick men and fight, Moses said, I will be on the mount with the rod of God in intercession. He was saying that as you do the physical thing, he says, I will be in the realm of the spirit, influencing the physical result from the spirit. The challenge with Christians is this. This is what we are. Depend on your orientation. Most Christians want to do the physical thing without doing what? The spiritual thing. And some people want to do the spiritual thing without doing what? The physical thing. So I'll give an example. So someone is praying for funding. It goes into the spirit. Once you are done praying, then you go back to the physical. And go and get Bible and paper. And say, what do I have to do to get this funding? Glory to God. I said glory to God. A guy is praying for someone to get married to him. Prayed and prays and prays and prays and prays. Once you finish praying, when you come to church, you open your eyes. You look to your right and to your left. Which one is the Lord saying here? Glory to God. Many of you here are praying for business expansion. You know, just to attend the business association course is a problem. And you don't know that expansion is a function of knowledge, of mindset, and, you know, of network. So Moses said this. Moses said, Moses said this. He says, go and pick up. He says, go and get a good team. He said, go and get a good team of people that would do something. He said, go and get a good team. See what he says. He said, choose, ye, um, he said, choose us out men. And go and fight the Amalekite tomorrow. He says, I will stand upon the top of the mountain. So, God is not against strategy. If you are in business, you need to have clear strategy. You, this is what this also says. Someone says, strategize as if you will never pray. Then pray as if you have no strategy. He says, strategize as if you don't know prayer then pray as if you have no strategy. That's the balance. Look at what happened in verse 11. So there were two points when someone did something physical. And this is very powerful. This is very powerful. You know, you are praying about your approval and all of those things. The question is that, have you gotten the best people to work on that approval with you? Prayer is not an excuse for bad results. Prayer is not an excuse for bad strategies. So let's look at the next line. Verse 11. I'm going to jump quickly because of time. The Bible says this. Let's read together just to make sure you are there. Want to go? Look into your Bible. The screen may not be on today. Look into your Bible. Bring out your phones. That's why I want to look into your Bible. Look into your Bible. Are you there? All right. Want to go? And it came to pass when Moses held up his. Uh, uh, some are not reading. If you don't have a Bible, tap your name and say, You can use my own. You can use my own. You can use my own. Yeah. Exodus. Chapter 17, verse 11. Exodus chapter 17, verse 11. I have a wonderful Bible. 
the gift of God. We shall travel together, my. Praise the Lord. Okay, verse 11. The Bible says, and it came to pass when Moses. Hold on. I want to ask you this. Listen to me. If you are not a believer, this sounds crazy. I don't understand how you feel. The Bible says Moses was on top of some mountain. But as long as Moses held up his hands in intercession, the Bible says what happened? The Israel will prevail. The, the message translation said, as soon as Moses lifted up his hands, that Israel found themselves winning. That's what the message translation says. But when Moses did not do what is spiritual, then Israel began to lose. So, it almost seemed to me that there's life is very spiritual influence is strong. It can influence things in the physical. This was spiritual influence. Look at it. Can I get the car? Yeah. You need to be fast with it. You know, this was spiritual influence. Look at it. I, I want to show you what spiritual influence really looks like today. And, and this would really, really bless you. The Bible says, when Moses, when Moses did what? When Moses, look at me everyone. When Moses lifted up his hands, what happened? When he lifted up his hands, they far moved faster. When he lifted up their hands, they far did not move. Glory to God. This is really good. Please bring your attention to this car. Hallelujah. Exactly. So this is your life. This is very cool. Let me show you the power of the spirit. Can it go forward right now? Are we good? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That car is going forward. Stop. This is spiritual. The spiritual is remote control function. You don't have to touch it. From where you, I don't know where you're going to, you need to stand with me. From where you are with the remote, from where you are with the remote, you can in first bring back the casa. Some people, this is how their marriage has been brought backwards. Stop. And this was the Bible. This is spiritual. This, this, this is the influence of the spiritual. Most people, when they car, bring it forward. So what they want to use is you use their hand to stop the car. But the force that is pulling the car forward is beyond them. So even with them and their hand, they find themselves going backward. Because life is spiritual. Some of you, this is your marriage. You need the remote to move it forward. Some of you, this is your approval. You need the remote to move it forward. The question is this. The question is this. Do you have the remote? Do you have know how to use it to move your life forward? So many people are here. They are trying to push their life. <laughs> That's not how we do it. We're influencing from the realm of the spirit. Some people are here. They are trying to push their file. We're influenced from the realm of the spirit. Every time we gather the next level in the morning, what are we doing? We're releasing the influence. And, and you know the thing? This song says, why do you pray continuously? This is why you pray continuously. Bring back the car. Bring back the car. Bring it back. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. No, don't take it forward. Just bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, okay. Are we ready? When you start praying, look at it. It's going forward. You know what that means? This is what I want to show you. Sometimes when you pray, the change does not happen at once. And if it does not happen, it does not mean it's not working. It just means that it's work in progress. I have something in my office. It's called BIP. It's a sticker, actually. It's like a, it, I don't know what, some, it's a book liner. It's called Breakthrough in Progress. Sometimes when you think your prayer is not working, it's working. It's just called what? Breakthrough in Progress. So someone says, my prayer is not working. Don't speak like that. Say, it's Breakthrough in Progress. Because look at this car right now. This is the point of breakthrough. He has left where it was. But is he here right now? No. Because it's still breakthrough in progress. If I can keep pushing, the car will get to where it needs to get to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good opportunity to clap somebody. So the question I want to ask you today is this. 
what do you need to move in your life that's why you need to understand the believer's authority the reason why is that with your authority you can move things things are not see things may look natural let me give you some examples so i'm talking about how life is spiritual you know i i i, I <laughs> there was a I, I will never forget this that, that there was a lady i i will never forget in my life i was a younger pastor and um she she her stomach just began to grow big but the challenge was that she went to several hospitals and they kept on referring her from one hospital to the other hospital to the other hospital and guess what they found out nobody knew how her stomach was going big it was not a fibroid her stomach just began to grow big and for one year she began to go from hospital to hospital they couldn't treat her because they didn't know what it was they eventually brought her to me and you know when i saw her i just said you are affliction of the devil you must come out of her body i said out in jesus name the next i think i pray for on a sunday the next morning she had an appointment with another doctor for the first time they saw what was wrong why couldn't they see it for the last one year when a problem is covered as a spiritual needle and such a cap blade cannot fix it let me tell you something if you're delayed on the spiritual realm there's no way you can go to you can get help because spiritual help must be solved for spiritual realm. Spiritual problems must be solved for spiritual problems. That's why when they say that there's a problem with when they say there's a problem with someone in our country, they say maybe he was arrested for fraud. They will say, is it a financial problem or is it a political problem? You know why? If it's a political problem, if the person likes, if he tenders all the papers that shows that he is clean, he will still go to jail. Because the problems, the root of the problem is not economical or financial. The root of the problem is what? It's political. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The spirit realm is very real. When you read in the Bible, you read of a woman called Rahab. I don't know if you know her story. When the walls of Jericho was going to come down, the Bible says that as soon as Israel would shout, he said the city will be cursed. But Rahab, because she helped the Jews, they told her to put a red rope outside your fence. He said, put a red rope outside your fence. As soon as they shouted, everything in the city began to crumble. What did crumble? The house of Rahab. The reason why was that because the red rope was the red rope. The red rope was referring to the blood of Jesus. The finished work of Calvary. That as long as you stay in the life of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. The red rope, it's, it's not about, you know, well, one of the days I will have the opportunity to talk about the blood of Jesus because a lot of people say the wrong way. You know, it's almost as if we think it's a paint, like say, just come the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is really a metaphor. And that's why, if you see throughout the New Testament, there's no place the apostles or Jesus himself ever said the blood of Jesus. But so powerful. How does a red robe preserve a whole house? The influence of the Spirit. Jesus Christ went to Peter. Peter had fished all night. If you know anything about fishing, when I was young, I tried to learn fishing. I had a cousin that was good at fishing. And one of the things we used to do is that if you had to go and fish, you had to go very early in the morning or what? Early in the evening. And I said, why? He said, because that's when the fish cannot see the bait. They can't see the movement and they can easily eat. You know, that's what I was told. I mean, I hope that's true. That's what I was told. So that explained to us why Peter fished what? All night. Because that's the time. That's the best catching season for fish. And it caught nothing. Then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ finished teaching in the broad daylight. And Jesus Christ said, cast your net into the deep for a catch. And Peter said, sir, you are a preacher. I am a fisherman. There's no more fish here. By what I know. He said, not just that. We fished last night and we didn't find fish here. And Peter reluctantly, just kind of said, cast your nets. We just reluctantly took one net. And put it in there. And fish gathered. Question, where did the fish come from? The fish came because the spirit realm, the spirit realm had influenced them. Where there was no contract when you release the force of the spirit it will be as if they just noticed you let, let me tell you something there eh? spiritual force is powerful though <laughs> if you do gen z i don't understand the Holy spirit you're under influence already oh. i'm telling you, as as i don't believe in demon that statement shows you're under demonic influence eh? because what you've 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 been anybody that said i don't believe in devils it already shows you're under demonic influence because 
it is a function of the seducing spirits it's a function and that's how they destroy people why i want to ask you you think others that do yahoo plus and um, blood money you think people just disappear i mean in, 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 in oh, this is a very terrible story we have a neighbor in bagada and he just came to see me and said it's not been okay i said, I said what happened he said my son went to school six months ago he was on his way back from school three months ago we've not seen him since then he said he told us when he was coming back home that's coming back home he says we've not seen him and this is about maybe eight years after they've not seen him i, I saw the mother of the boy age in front of me and most of the time those boys are kidnapped and used for ritual rituals you think if there was nothing in the realm of the spirit people would not people engage that when you see all these young girls doing ayatanga or oh, what 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 do they call katanga what kayamata kayata it even sounds very demonic like kayata it's not a joke <laughs> oh someone say hallelujah let me show you one scripture second kings chapter three let me show you one scripture because the spiritual has influence over the natural that's what i'm going to the spiritual second kings chapter three the spiritual has influence second Kings chapter three verse 26 let me show you something quickly and when i say spiritual has influence you always think that you know that you know it will be someone wearing red and white and saying that hey, achuma, achuma, achuma. No, see that can happen but that's just one side of the spiritual sometimes the spiritual is not as dramatic as you think it's not as dramatic as you think some of you if you're not careful your husband is also under an influence you just don't know Someone says, is it possible? Ask Peter. Peter said to Jesus Christ, you, and, and Jesus Christ looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter as a Satan, but in the moment, the influence of the devil was speaking through him. That's why he must be careful who you take advice from. Because in the moment, the influence of the devil can take, can take them over, and they begin to say something. And you, and you, hmm, see wisdom, see wisdom. That's why I love the prayer pastor you led. He says, may wisdom not look like foolishness to me. May foolishness not look like wisdom to me. It's a, it's a prayer you must pray for yourself. Oh. That Lord, as I make decisions, may foolishness, ah, may foolishness not look like wisdom to me. You know why? When people choose foolishness, initially it tastes and looks and feels like wisdom. Until they lose the money. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 26. Someone say Hallelujah. Let's read together. The Bible says this. Can we read together? Want to go? And the king of Mobile saw that the battle was too sore or intense for him. He took with him 700 men that drew sword to break through even to the king of Edom. But they could not. The king of Moab was an idol worshiper. See, so when he did everything and he could not, look at verse 27. The Bible says, and he took his eldest son. That's the, the person. That's what they call a parent. It should be the king after him. That should have reigned in his stead. And offered him. He took his child. And offered him for a bunch of things. What was he trying to do? He was trying to invoke diabolical powers. He was trying to invoke diabolical strongholds. He was trying to invoke the nomads. The exousias of the demonic world to come to his help. Did they come? See. The Bible says. And as soon as he did that, there arose indignation against Israel. He said something rose against the enemy. There are things you do that scatters everything. There are things you do that arrange everything. That's why this month as we talk about the issue of authority, I'm just showing you how powerful the spiritual realm is. That even fish can respond to spiritual realm. Fish. Battle responded to the realm of the spirit. These are demonic powers. Oh. Glory to God. It takes authority to influence things in your favor. No wonder Hebrew says this. It says through faith we understand that the things we see are not made of the things we do not see 
that the things we see are created, sustained, influenced, produced by the things we do not see. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So what am I teaching us? What I'm teaching us is that, like that car was moving, how you can understand, I'm telling you, how you can understand, how you can influence things in the realm of the spirit. It, it doesn't, so it's about me, pastor. This is not about pastoring. This is not about pastoring. If you not, let me tell you something. If you don't know the, your authority in Christ, Satan will cheat you big time. Did you notice in the Bible? The Bible. Let me show you something. <laughs> Someone say hallelujah. Act to the apostles. This is even, I didn't even tend to show you this, but I mean, this came off my spirit. And there must be a reason why it came off my spirit. Hmm. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Yeah. Act 9, verse 1, then Act 12, verse 1. We'll take it one by one. The Bible says this. And Saul was yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord and went unto the high priest. This thing he was doing was an influence of demonic spirits. I'm just showing you that, you know, you. It, Bible says he was just angry at Christians. That thing he was, look at chapter 12. Influenced by the Holy Spirit. This is a clear case. You know what I'm trying to I'm trying to show you what how the influence is subtle. How the influence is what? Subtle. Chapter 12, verse 1. Because the way Hollywood paints it, it's not accurate. But you must remember, holy people are those of the Bible. It's just for friction. It's just like what will make you laugh. Hebrews 12, verse 1. See what about what about? Let's read. Want to go? Now about this time. Herod what? Herod the king what? To do what? Why? He just picked up fire. Not that the church did anything wrong, though. He said, Ever the king just stretched forth his hand to vex the church. That vexed the church. You know, he killed James. You know who James is? James was what the Bible called the son of Bo- Bohannas, sons of thunder. These were people that walked with Jesus Christ. Just because he was hungry, he killed James. I wish he stopped there. Do you know after he killed James, what did he do? He went for Peter. Why was he going for James and Peter? The Bible says there were three pillars in the church. Who were they? Peter, James, and John. Listen to the as he went for James, no resistance. He took he took one pillar, no resistance. He went for another pillar. Don't worry. She didn't kill one business. You didn't pray. He's coming for the next one. Because the work of Satan is this, it does not stop until everything is over. He went, he took James. You know, people, you know, I always think that. I, why didn't the brethren pray when James was arrested? Maybe they were like, all of us here, ah, 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 Pastor B is arrested. Ah, God will deliver him. Ah, God will deliver him. Ah, you. But eventually he died. But when he took Peter, then the church arose in authority. The church arose. The Bible says, the prayers were made without ceasing. What was the difference? Why was Peter released? And James, why did he die? Because when Peter, when Peter was arrested, the church arose in prayer. They took their authority. In fact, when Peter was released, he came to a place where they were still praying for his release. Keep saying, whatever will be, will be. You will see a lot of things go wrong. January, your sales went down. February, it went down. March, it went down. You say, it's a change of transition. Don't worry. You will soon see a change of new government. Are you here? Let me say something to you quickly. The influence of Satan can be so subtle that you think it's normal, meanwhile it's big. The extreme is why you become so conscious. That's not what I want it to be. Where I want it to be is that you can take authority. The Bible says they stopped. The Bible says the same day, Peter would have been taken out of prison. 
to be judged by Herod. The same day an angel came. Why did an angel came? Because believers took authority. They gave me that picture. The believers took authority. Lift up your hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Say, I take my authority in Christ. Say, I take my authority in Christ. Say, I tell of your life. Write in the comments says, I take my authority in Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hold this picture for me. Many of you may not know this man. But his name is Apostle Ayob Abalola. He was the founder of CAC. I know that you, a lot of you know foreign preachers. But you need to know that there were African fathers that had raw apostolic power. All of you from Ekiti know this man. Do you know him? He, he shook it so much that states and region knew him. When he got born again, I was full of power of the Holy Ghost. He went into a kitty and wanted to wanted to a land to build the church. Of course, the, the royal father of the kitty was very angry because people were converting to Christianity. So they said they will give him something that will kill him. So they said, You want to build a church, build it in that place. He did not realize that that was forbidding forest. It was a forest that was dedicated to an idol. And nobody has ever entered and come out. Eventually, when he got to know, he said, it makes no difference. I'm going to go there and build the church and enter the place of the demonic power. Everybody was crying. He will not go. He took his bell. He used to use a bell for prayer. Entered into the place. Story says that I think there was a snake or something like that that confronted him. You know, you know, and the snake wound. It was a big snake they used to worship. I hope I have the story right. What around him? Because it was like a pipe was strangled. That's how you used to kill everybody. And they would, once they see the snake, the power will paralyze them. And as it wrapped around him, he didn't even struggle. The snake wrapped around him. And it was about to stretch. He said, touch not my anointed. And do my breath no sound. The big snake unwound himself around him. Went some few miles and caught fire and burnt. Till today, in that place, that place became a church. And it was so powerful to show that this is not um, like all these stories of, they say, in Ekiti, there's, the Ekiti people need to help me now. They say something like, the king was so changed, that is a title of the Ekiti king, that, um, that um, he left the house of witches and wizards and became a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, who, who, knows, who knows it in Yoruba? I don't know. Who, who knows that? There's a saying, it's a saying, the Ekiti people know. What? What? They are not interested. I'm trying to remember because it's, it's a powerful story. It's a powerful story. Thank you. In, in England, there, there, there was a man called John Knox. The Queen of England said this. Queen Elizabeth, the first Queen Elizabeth. He said, I'm afraid of the prayer of John Knox that 1,000 armed British soldiers. He said, because I've seen the result of his prayers before. It's this question we want to ask today is this what did these people have that we do not have see because they have the same name of jesus yes or no they have the same holy ghost yes or no so what is wrong with us how daddy your house that is 10 years old say she's she's my mother's spirit the man you that you're 54 as a man you prostrate and say my mother i, I beg you just live in peace what did they have they threaten a Christian in the office. He said, Pastor, what they said is happening. I'm using the toilet for 25 times in a day. I'm, what did they have? How come the apostolic father was so bold in their faith? They exercised so much authority. What did they have? What they knew was the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're teaching you today. What they knew was the authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, when you need authority, you don't stress. Oh. When you see, let me tell you, when you see a man was cast a demon and they now start sweating, go. I will not go. Just know that there's a problem. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first question, does Satan have power? Tell me. Give me a microphone. Does Satan have power? Yes or no? Give me a microphone. Don't say that power. Give to a normal friend. She said he has power. 
Yeah, give it to her. Does Satan have power? He does. How do you know that? Has he used it on you before? You've seen his power. <laughs> or are you a partner in the powers? Yeah. How, how do you know? Well, from what you said. From what I've said. Yeah. What did I say? Um, uh, we can't just be aloof to have to believe that. Uh... This Satan, I've said God has power. Yeah, Jesus has power. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Another person, does Satan has power? Yes or no? Another person, I want to tell me. Uh, yeah, G give it to Brother Ladi, will you? Yeah, give it to him. Does Satan has power? Yeah. I think he does. You think he does? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me help you here. When a Christian answers a, a, a subject of the Bible, it's not okay for you to, you to say that, um, I think so, yes or no. It's good to go back to the Word of God and say, the reason why I believe this is because the Bible said so. So Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Yeah, Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. If he has power, what does he use his power to do? If he has power, what does he use this teaching is getting deeper? If he has power, what does he use his power to do? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Are you there somebody? Okay, what does it say? Want to go? Behold, I give what? It says I give unto you power to tread upon what? Serpent and scorpion. Hold on. Don't just read like that. You need to ask yourself, what are serpents and scorpions? The next line tells you what serpents and scorpions are. There's a rule in the Bible interpretation. Is the word is a rule of Kai. Kai means sometimes when you see an following a proper noun, it means it's an expansion of the original thought. Is the root Kai in the Greek? He says this. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. What are serpents and scorpions? See the word Kai and there is the word Kai explaining what serpents and scorpions are. What are they? And over all what the power. Wow. So, the Bible declares that Satan has power. Someone says, yes, 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 yes. He had power before Jesus Christ came. But after Jesus Christ came, all his power was taken. Let's look at the Bible. Is that true? Let's look at the Bible. Second Corinthians, quickly, chapter 4, verse 4. Second Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4. Luke, chapter 4, verse 5. I want us to jump quickly. Second Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4. Then Luke, chapter 4, verse 5. Does Satan have power? And I want to show you, today I want to answer one big question. So why do bad things happen to good people and bad people? Look what the Bible says here. Want to go, want to go. In whom the God what was the God of this world? The power, the power, the God. He, for him to be a God, he must have power. In whom the God of this world has blinded the heart. Question, was this before Jesus Christ died or after he died? This after he died because in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. So it was in what? In the present. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 4 rather verse 5. Luke chapter 4 verse 5. Does Satan have power? Let's look at it. You know how people rebuke the devil? People say that they, God forbid. Let me just tell you, this has no spiritual significance to whatever you are doing. If you like, snap three times. If you like, snap four times. This has no, people that have power don't snap. Power is in spoken words. Let's <laughs> say, so God forbid. God, God forbid. God forbid. What, what does this mean with spiritual power? To, to, you will use two finger. I, I reject it. You reject it like this. Did your master reject it like this? We reject my spoken words. See what the Bible says here. And Satan, taking him into a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment. Take note of the world, the kingdoms of the world. Next verse. Next verse, quickly. Next verse. And the devil said to Jesus Christ, what did he say? Want to go? Does Satan have power? Wow. Take note. See, he says, all those powers was given unto me and the glory of them. Take note, verse 5 says, he showed them all the kingdoms of the world. What did he show him? He showed him, in a moment, he showed him the economy. He showed him the sports. He showed him the politics. And when he showed him the system, because it was spiritual, he could see the satanic power influencing the system. For example, there's a spirit called the spirit of mammon. It's a, it's a demon that controls money. And it has one of, two objectives, to make sure that Christians don't get it. Because if they get it, they will sponsor the gospel. Then two, to make sure that those that get it are worshiping Satan. 
So when someone says, I did money ritual, let me tell you what happened. It's a corporation. It's a, how does money ritual work? If it really works, it's a corporation. This is how it works. The money was already held back by Satan to make your life difficult. So when you now appease the evil spirit, he only releases his hold on it. For example, have you had a hold on your money in the bank before? Yes or no? They say, um, there's a hold on your money. It's your money, but you cannot access it. When the bank releases it, they give you money. No, they just remove the hold on it. The work of the spirit of mammon is that they hold money. So once you become a subject, they now release their hold, which was what Jesus was trying to do with Satan was trying to just, just kind. He said, if you worship me, I will what? I will give you. He says, I will release the hold. Someone says, Satan gave me child. Satan cannot give child. Where does he see it? Monkey, the bomb banana. Who give monkey banana? Ah, okay, the child. He's the one that helped the child before. He just, if he, that's why you sacrifice to appease. The appease means the anger they have that made them hold the thing before. Let them release it. Are you getting it? See what he says. He says, all this power is given unto me. We're going to go maybe in the next service or next week. What, when, 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 who gave it to him? But I wanted to establish you that Satan has power and authority. Number one, where did he get authority from? Number one, he got it from Adam. Where did he get power from? Remember, he's an angel himself. So he has angelic power. What's the difference between authority and power? I'll give an example. Authority talks about authority. Um, authority. The, is, there, is there anybody with a badge here? Maybe a, a, something like someone in the car park department. You have that thing you used to wear, that vest. So authority talks about delegated power. The word authority is the word exousia. Yeah, that's what authority is. Authority talks about a right. Yeah. A right. That's what authority is. So, but the que that question, what is power? Power, the Greek word power is dunamis. It means the ability to do. So, dunamis is where we get the word dynamite from. So, when you see a bomb, a bomb does not need anything to cause trouble. Once you detonate a bomb by itself, it causes trouble. That's dunamis. So, there's authority and there's power. Okay. Let's let's uh praise god hallelujah are you getting it the bible says this i wanted to see verse five i wanted to see it very well because you want to see what the influence of the devil does so that the reason why is that if you see what the influence of the devil does you will understand why we need authority as a believer see what it says verse 5 and the devil took him into a high mountain and showed him in a moment all what the kingdoms of this world one the devil has the kingdoms verse 6 now says it says all this power and the glory will i give to you yes or no there are three words that are very symbolic here bible scholars he said kingdom he said power he said glory someone had said those words also in the bible who remembers who remembers who remembers those words kingdom power and glory matthew chapter 6 in the lord's prayer what did he say he said give us this identity for thine for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory so satan and god are competing for kingdom power and glory what did matthew 6 says it says the kingdom and the power and the glory belongs to god no one that was praying let your will be done on earth because why was he saying that it will be done on earth because if the will of god is done on earth it's not be a prayer let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so his will is not always done on earth the sickly children is not the will of god so he says so why do bad things happen in this world we're ready to already second corinthians 4 4 the god of this world if it's a god of this world he will rule this world the nature of the god of this world shows up in the world so it's nature of sickness shame anger delay everything shows so the reason why the world is in chaos is because satan is what the god of this world so why is that important to us if we understand that he's a god of this world our job is now that in this world to establish his kingdom his power and what his glory 
and he's not going to sit down and watch you that's why we need authority and power to establish over the kingdom of darkness his kingdom his power and his glory glory to god wow wow oh wow oh wow sometimes you see a man just one week after the marriage just die that's not the will of God. It's the work of the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. The God of this world. One time I was in the service and there was a word of knowledge. They said there are people that feel like eating human flesh. Those kind of abnormal cravings are the God of this world. It's the influence. People feel like sleeping with animals. Have you not heard or seen that before? People feel like sleeping with animals. It's the work. It's the influence of the God of this world. Look, go back to look at what it says. He says, in whom the God of this world, how does it work? He says, has blinded their mind. It works through the mind. It comes at a thought. It comes as an emotion. You will just see yourself depressed. You don't know the God of this world has sat on your mind. Nothing, no, nothing made you depressed. No. You will just be moody. You've come under the influence. Have you not seen people? They say they are cryptomaniac. You know cryptomaniac? People that have the disorder of stealing. They steal by default. The God of this world. How can you? Because the devil is a thief. He lives inside. So he will be making you steal. They don't even steal. Once they steal, some of them have the money to buy it. But they prefer to steal it. The God of this world. Look at the Bible in the book of Daniel. The Bible says Daniel prayed. The Bible says Daniel prayed. That the prince of passion, a demonic spirit, came to stop the prayer. The God of this world. Remember, he says, the kingdoms belong to him. The business kingdom is his own. So if you're not careful as a businessman, you will find yourself hustling in business, hustling in business, because there's a resistance. There's a resistance. Even as a minister, you will find yourself pushing the ministry. There's a resistance, but thank God. Philip chapter 2 verse 9. He has given us a name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Of those in the earth, under the earth, and in heaven. Somebody say hallelujah. He has given us a name. He gave us the authority because he knows we will need it. That's why he gave us the authority. He loaded us with power. He gave us authority. He said, go with my name. When you enter that Ashatabaya, before you go for the business meeting, I bring everybody here under the influence of the Spirit. I bring them under the influence of the Spirit. The ones that will touch my father, I bring them under the influence of the Spirit. The major problem is this. When a Christian begins to beg, a demon will not respond. Demons respond to authority, not begging. Oh, glory to God. Do you have some more time? Wow. The work of evil spirits, you see them. Luke 16, 16 speaks about the spirit of divination. What is the spirit of divination? These are the spirits that are not tomorrow. Some of you, some of you, if you're not careful, your parents or your friends will contact you and tell you to go and see somebody that has a spirit. That's all those habits. They have the spirit of divination. All those psychic, they walk with the spirit of divination. See what the Bible says here. No, Acts 16, 16. Spirit of divination. It was a young girl. In fact, these ones, they, they, they began to work on Google. They put an advert on Google. See what the Bible says. Acts 16, 16. The Bible says this lady had the spirit of, it came to pass and went to pray. A certain damsel possessed. She was hot. Beautiful. That's why all these men are looking for, you know, you will look for color, tone, skin, color. You will just carry something that is not your own. He said, possess with the spirit of divination. How did they know? The only reason why they knew was not because she knew. It was because Paul could see to the spirit. But she was possessed. And see, and brought her master's much gain. She brought money. So all this Akayata, Koyoto is not new. Where they use the money powers and they package it and bring themselves money. Look at the Bible. <laughs> Are you here? Look at eight, um, so many examples. Look at Luke 13, 16. A woman was sick. Jesus Christ said, this person that Satan has bound, 
Just not say that it was an infection or a virus. Let me show you what it said. I, I want to slow down. I, I, I want to slow down because I don't want to be in a hurry. I, I, we're going to close now. Luke 13 verse 16. Luke 13 verse 16. I'm just showing the influence of demonic spirit. I showed in the life of Herod how Herod just got angry. I showed it with Peter how Peter just gave an advice that will lead Jesus Christ into error. Look at this one. The Bible says, Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Read the next time. Who what? The, the woman was sick, but see how Jesus Christ described the sickness. He says, This sickness is a bondage of Satan. That's why all these years, 18 years, nobody could treat her and heal her because it was bound. Let me close. Second, oh, glory to God. Second, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. Oh, so that we can close. Ooh, glory to God. You know why I'm saying this thing so far? If you feel scared of the devil, you need to get born again. Because if you're born again, you're superior to him. Second, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. But this, this is why you now appreciate our authority in Christ. This is how you appreciate how we pray next level. We don't say, ah, Lord, no, 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 no. This is how we pray. The but see, see, see. So Satan has power, but can see what Jesus Christ did. Bible says, and being in, being, being, being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death. Why did he die? Even the death of the cross. Verse nine. Let's keep. Why did he die? Verse nine. Hallelujah. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given a name above every name name means authority hallelujah he says god has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name it doesn't matter what they call him our name is above every other name what does it mean look at the next thing that at the name of jesus every knee hallelujah every knee shall bow at the name of jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things in the earth of things under the earth he said at the name of jesus every knee shall bow at the name of jesus every knee shall bow at the name of jesus every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Are you hearing me, somebody? He said, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say, you have to leave your family. Say, that's okay, daddy. I've come in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They said, that guy in NMPC uses jazz. He said, that's okay. I've come in a big name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say, your child has a certain sickness. He said, that's fine. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say, some trouble is wrong. He will not get married. He said, I have authority. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. If you believe, shout amen. Stand up and exercise your authority.